Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about functions. I'll start this by giving you five examples to show you the syntax of functions. The first one is the simplest one. It's a function that takes no parameter and returns no value. The second one takes no parameter but returns a string as a return value. The third one, greet, takes one parameter of string and return another string. The addition function takes two parameters of integer and returns an integer. The last one is an interesting one. The getName function returns two strings as a return value. This is again taking advantage of the tuple syntax. What gets returned is actually a tuple. So with the help of the tuple, a function can not only take arbitrary number of parameters, but also returns arbitrary number of uh, return values. To use the getName function, we can do let first last equal to getName, and first we'll have the Bob, and last we'll have the Smith. GetName dot zero also give you Bob. GetName dot first also give you Bob. This is because the returned tuple is a tuple that has names for each field. A function can also return an optional. For example, get age returns an integer optional. So the 45 is auto boxed into an optional and returned. Let a equal to get age, a is an optional integer, and a unwrap is an integer. Similarly, get name 2 returns a tuple optional. So let x equal to get name 2, x is a tuple optional and x unwrapped is an optional. Suppose we have a function to make rectangles. And this function takes two parameters, length and height. To use the function, we can do make rect 2345. This is fine, but by only looking at this statement, it is not clear which one is length and which one is height. So the code is not very readable. To solve that problem, Swift supports external parameter names. For example, the makeRect2 function defines both the external parameter names and the internal parameter names. The internal parameter names are used inside the function. The external parameter names are used when you call the function. Now it is very clear which one is length and which one is height. However, it is kind of verbose that you have to define two names for the same parameter. Oftentimes, you probably want to have one name to be used both externally and internally. To do that, you can use the sharp sign to be placed in front of the parameter. This means that this name is used as both external parameter name and internal parameter name. So when you call the function, you can do make rect 3 length 23 height 45. Sometimes you want to have a parameter to have a default value. For example, make rect 4, the height has a default value of 10. When you call the function make rect 4, 23, the length is 23 and the height is taking the default value of 10. If you don't want to use the default net value, you can override it with your own value. Note that the height is the internal name of the parameter. However, here we are using it as an external parameter name. What happened? This is actually a Swift rule that a parameter with default value always has an external name. If you don't provide external name, it will just use the internal name as external name. So this is effectively having a sharp over here. If you really, really don't want to have an external name for the parameter that has default value, you can use underscore to ignore the external name. However, this is not recommended by Swift. You can also have a function that takes arbitrary number of parameters. So here is a function that can take arbitrary number of integers as parameters. 
So when I call the function, I can call sum 1, 3, 4, 6, or any number of uh, integers to be added as a parameter. This is called a variadic parameter. Note that a function can have at most one variadic parameter. You can have none, but at most you can only have one. And if you do have a variadic parameter, that parameter must be the last parameter of the function. So you cannot have another parameter over here. However, you could have a parameter over here. When you define a function, the parameter is by default a constant. So if I want to change the parameter in the function, it won't compile. If you do want to change the parameter value, you have to define it to be a var. Now the parameter can be changed in the function. However, the change that you've made to the parameter only exists in the function. It doesn't persist outside the function. For example, h equal to 10, and when I call the function with h, you might expect that h will be modified by this statement, but it is not. h is still 10 after the function. If you do want the change to last after the function is done, you have to define the parameter to be an in-out. And then, whatever the change you've made to the parameter will persist outside of the function. For example, i equal to 10, and then I call the function with ampersand i, and i becomes 11. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, and see you next time.